Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to some more StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today we're gonna have a look at a Zerg vs Zerg that I played against Nixie, a Grandmaster level Zerg player. And in this specific game, I want to be discussing um, a thing that I actually covered in a recent video. I want to be discussing why Zerglings counter Mutalisk. I recently made a video explaining a build order that you can do in Zerg vs Zerg that goes against um, pretty much everything that you used to know in Zerg vs Zerg, but it counters early game Roaches, it counters early game Zerg Baneling play if you micro well as well and it counters Mutalisk and especially that last one is where a couple of people in the comment section got a couple of questions you were like hey how can how can Zerklings possibly counter Mutalisk if Mutalisk can shoot down and you know Zerklings cannot shoot up so this specific game it's a relatively good example game I do not micro um, even remotely close to perfect in this specific one um, but you will catch very quickly why it is that Zerklings are very good against Mutalisk now, we are going to do a very similar build order. We're both going to go for a quick third base. Um, I'm going to go for a Zerking Speed first. He's going to go for Zerking Speed first. Then we both add on a Bailing Nest. But at that point, I decide to go for plus one attack on my Zerklings. And my opponent decides to go for three more gas, attack up to a lair, and eventually get the Spire started as well. Now, obviously, since my opponent also puts down a Spine Crawler, he's going to be the one that is playing defensive. He's going to try and basically just sit back until the Mutalisks are out. And once the Mutas are out, he will start droning heavily and he will try his very hardest to try um, and contain me on three or two bases. Now, in this specific game, like I mentioned, I'm gonna go for a heavy amount of Zerklings, and like I mentioned, I don't even micro or macro this perfectly either, but it isn't even really that close. Now, for the most part, in Zerk vs Zerk, Mutalisk right now are the standard mid-game approach. However, especially over the last couple days, I've noticed that more and more Zerk players have started involving or evolving um, like early game upgrades to their Zerklings as well, just because of how strong the Zerklings really are against Mutalisk. So, the reason why it is so strong and the reason why it is so powerful um, is for the very reason that getting those gas geysers up early, spending the money on the lair, spending the money on the spire, and being in a defensive position in general is costing you a lot more than if your opponent is gonna counter you with zerklings of his own. If you make a lot of zerklings, they're obviously relatively cheap, and let's say the cost of a lair alone, you could basically count it as about 8 zerklings. Add on double gases, add in the 12 drones that you will need to put in all of those gases, or the triple gases rather, add in the 12 drones that you have that in gas, uh, that are not mining minerals anymore and then also adding the cost of the spire everything combined let's say both players are microing evenly it is already going to be very difficult to play defensive at that point in the game because you're investing so many resources in getting that early game um, spire going but on top of that if you also go by the way my opponent's being a little annoying right here i do get that um bailing that started right there but on top of that if you do go for um the plus one attack those engagements are significantly in favor um, of the Zerkling player. So, let's say you are playing heavy, heavy Zerklings, and your opponent is playing Zerkling Bane Muta. Before the Mutalisks are out, which is always gonna take quite a lot of time, before the Mutalisks are out, he's only gonna have Zerklings, Queens, Spine Crawlers, and Banelings to defend. And if you manage to not run all of your Zerklings into Banelings, oftentimes you will be able to just straight up claim the victory right there. So, so far I've been playing a very standard game right here. I've got my third base going up a lot faster than you would usually get it in Heart of the Swarm, um, but that is completely standard right now in Legacy of the Void. Got my spawning pool done, got my bailing nest started, and right there also started the plus one attack upgrade. Just for safety's sake, I am gonna add on two bailings right now, um, just so I can actually, you know, start being uh, very defensive, at least for the time being, until my plus one attack is done. And I'm just trying to hold on to this third base. I did see my opponent move out with a couple of speed links across the map, uh, so that is the reason why I'm in such a defensive posture. Already put down a um, already put down a creep tumor as well to make sure that that third base is connected with the main base. And at this point, I'm just gonna start making a lot, a lot of zerklings. Now, in the meantime, if I take control of the camera really quickly, you see that my opponent has already started up the lair. He's investing minerals and in getting the extractor started in the natural as well in the main base, while I am still investing into everything else. And you can see in the supply count, this is already starting to translate. Like, what my opponent has been building, it's not so much that he has a very bad macro, although right now he does have a whole bunch of minerals, but I assume he's saving up. But you already see a couple of supply difference, usually when your opponent is stacking up as greedy as he is right now. On top of that, 
Right now my plus one attack finishes, I know that I will be able to put on a crazy amount of pressure, and I was planning on doing that anyway. So right now I'm making a lot of Zerklings, trying to run across the map, and I'm gonna be morphing in a ton of Banelings. Just gonna try my very hardest to make as many as I possibly can, and I'm spreading those out preemptively. This is actually pretty nice to do. If you hold down shift, and you deselect two, and then re-rally, and deselect two, and deselect two again, you can basically have them all spread out. If you have a look at this, they're gonna automatically spread all out right after they're morphed in, which means that you can never really, you know, lose too many in one hit. Uh, but here's where the micro party starts. I know the plus one attack isn't done yet. I just did have a look at that one. He is flying in right now with the overlord, so he fully knows what I am going for. Um, and in the meantime, he is starting up more spine crawlers. He's very shortly going to be starting up the spire as well. Um, the spire is now started in the main base of his of my opponent right here. You can see it started right there. Uh, but at this point in time, he's infested so many resources and so many minerals and gas and whatnot to try and actually get this going. But in the end, it isn't really achieving all that much. I mean, it's not going to do anything until the spire is done. And I still have about a good, I think it's 100 seconds or so. Yeah, it's 71 seconds in StarCraft 2 uh, Legacy of the Void. There's 200 seconds right there, and I, I actually run my Banelings into... Or it's... Okay, whatever. I, I run my I run my Banelings into that Spire, or into that Queen right there. Absolutely silly. Should never be doing that. Um, but there's 71 seconds um, until the Spire is done. And at that point, I have a massive, massive timing window of about... I think about a good... I don't know, like two minutes or so, because you also need a critical amount of, of, of mutas to really stop this. Uh, so even though I'm not microing this even remotely perfect, and my macro is also off, and I'm floating a lot of resources, I still have a lot of time right now uh, to just finish off my opponent and to try and get the victory. Now, normally, if you play very well at that point, you would have just straight up won the game there. Honestly, like, I didn't micro very well there at all, so I lost a whole bunch of units. And honestly, for the most part, you should try and just micro a little bit better. But as long as you have... Um, enough units to try and finish off the game within two minutes, oftentimes you will just be able to squeeze out the victory. And you gotta keep in mind, he's spending a lot of gas right now to try and get all of these um, Banelings out as well. And since I'm playing so aggressive, he has to spend all of his minerals on these uh, Zerklings that he's making as well in order to hold on. For, for the most part, if you're gonna go for Mutalisk, and your opponent is gonna go for heavy, heavy Zerkling play, especially with plus one attack, you're just gonna simply not have enough stuff to hold on until the Mutalisk are out. Right now he's making three Mutalisks, and even if those would have been out a minute earlier, I still would be able to just flood on with more and more units. Now, I'm trying to not lose all of my stuff. Mutalisks are flying across the map right now. I already have Zerklings in his mineral line, gonna be having Zerklings in the other mineral line as well, and I'm just hitting all of my Queen and Jacks at home, trying to be as annoying as I possibly can, and just clean up whatever I can. So even though Mutas are out, He's not gonna be able to kill me because I just kill him way faster than he can kill my Zerklings. So hopefully this explained the question why Zerklings can count a Mutalisk if you play them accordingly. Once again, I would highly recommend that build order. So if you haven't checked that video out, I will leave that as the very first link right below the like button in the comments or in the description of this video. But other than that, I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile and I will see you in the next one.